Oh, this water tastes so delicious. Do you like to have a cold sip of water after you just finished a sports event? Or you've been running doing PE and you've gotten hot and you're just looking for some water or you just finished a dance event? Well, we all love water and especially when it's on hot days during the summer. But have you ever wondered how old is water and where does water come from? Do you ever wonder how much water covers the earth and of that water, how much do we actually get to use? Well, if you're interested in this, today we're going to explore the water cycle. So stay tuned so that you can learn more. If you're new to my channel, then click that subscribe button so that you will be notified every Saturday morning when I up upload videos on science concepts and conduct experiment. So let's get ready and explore the water cycle. Delicious. We continue to get fresh water because the water cycles over and over again. Yes, we are still drinking the water from five billion years ago. That's how old our water is so far that we've learned. Well, how does it actually work? Well, if you look here at this picture, you see a large body of water, the ocean. When the water is warmed by the sun, we have what we call evaporation. The water begins to move up into these tiny little droplets that we call gas. You know, when you put water on the stove and it begins to boil, the water begins to vaporize. And we see that steam come off and we see just those little tiny droplets. And as those droplets begin to form, they continue to move up into the atmosphere. The atmosphere is cooler the higher we get up. And as these water droplets begin to gather more and more, they form clouds. And when these clouds form and the water droplets more and more begin to gather, the clouds get bigger and they become heavier. Then we have what we call precipitation. And we have different types of precipitation. Rain, snow, sleet, hail. Well, depending on how cool it is in the atmosphere as you get higher and higher, those are the forms of precipitation that can come back to Earth. And if you see up here this serious cloud, this is a cold cloud. That means that it will snow from here because of this formation. This type of cloud we call a cumulus cloud or cumulus nimbus cloud. And as the snow and the precipitation begin to fall, over here we have snow. Snow begins to build up on the mountains. We have snow caps. And as thus, as the snow begins to rain, begins to melt, we have what we call runoff. And the runoff of the water runs into back into the large body, into lakes, into streams, into rivers. And then the process begins over and over and over. But we not only have evaporation from the water, from large body of water, we also have water that evaporates from plants. And we call this transpiration. And then we have water that seeps into the ground, we call infiltration. So we have fresh water everywhere. Let's look and see how it moves. So you see evaporation, transpiration. You see where the water is evaporating because the heat from the sun, then it forms into clouds. And then as the clouds get heavy, they begin to precipitate, give us rain, snow, sleet, and then we have runoff, and then it continues the cycle over and over. 
So this 1% of water that we have on earth is recycled over and over. And that's why it's important that we continue to use our fresh water carefully that we don't want to abuse it, we don't want to overuse it, we want to use it carefully because we are still cycling this water. I think this is one of the neatest process in earth that you get to see an ongoing basis. Let's explore a little bit and see if we can see this process through an experiment. Now that you understand the process of the water cycle, did you realize this water that I'm drinking this morning is five billion years old? This water has been cycled over and over again over the years. 97% of the water that covers the earth is salt water and 3% is fresh water. But we only actually use 1% of that fresh water because 2% is ice caps and groundwater that we do not use. Our earth is covered with three-fourths of water or 75% water on the actual land and landforms. We have lakes, we have rivers, we have streams, we have um, uh, other forms of water but then we have our large bodies of water that is salt water and that's our oceans and our seas guys and so we have this small percentage that we have to take care of because this is the percentage we use we're going to explore the water cycle a little farther and you're going to do an experiment so that you can see condensation precipitation and evaporation in order to get started, you're going to need some materials to do this experiment. Let's get started. For the experiment, you're going to need a hot bowl of water. For safety reasons, you will need an adult to do this part for you because the water has to be hot. You will need some clean wrap. You're going to take the clean wrap and cover the bowl. You can put a cup or a glass in the middle of the bowl. Take your saran wrap and put it tightly Seal it around the bow. If you notice, you're already seeing vapors. Now we're going to take ice. You need ice. And we're going to put the ice cubes on top. Why do you think we're going to put ice on top? We're going to let this sit. And we're going to observe and look for condensation and precipitation. So we're going to let this sit for a couple of minutes and we'll be right back. You see where the water is dropping? That's precipitation. The water vapors went up and then it formed condensation and now we have precipitation where the water is dropping back into the bowl and it is the same amount of water that I originally had in the bowl. If you look at the top, you will see where the water is puddling from where the ice is melting, but that's not the water on the inside. When you conduct this experiment, I want you to look or observe very carefully and put a cup on the inside so you can see how long it takes to collect your precipitation or we can call it your rain water.
Okay, friends, let's review. First, remember, with the water cycle, our Earth is covered with three-fourths of water. Of that three-fourths of water, 3% 3 is fresh water. Remember that 1% is water that we use and 2% is ice caps and ground water. 97% of the water on Earth is salt water. Remember with the water cycle, the water is heated by the sun. When the sun heats the water, it evaporates into these tiny droplets. And when these droplets gather together, the more they gather, it forms condensation, which, in, which forms clouds. Once the clouds are heavy with these droplets, they begin to separate and begin to participate, which is rain, hail, sleet, or snow, because the higher up it is, the cooler it is in the atmosphere. Then, once the water begins to go through precipitation, we get next where water is frozen on ice caps or mountains, or it begins to run off. Once it runs off, it goes back into the body of water. Not only do we have evaporation, we have transpiration, where water evaporates from plants. And then part of the water, when it's on runoff, it goes into the ground, which is infiltration. Remember the water process, and remember that water is over about, that water is 5 billion years old. Well, I hope you loved learning about the water process and that when you use water, whether you're taking a bath or cooking or washing dishes or just drinking water, remember that we have only 1% of fresh water and we have to take care of what we have. All right, friends, see you in the next video.